Hello, today, right now, this very moment, I'm going to talk about the pixel array. Ooh, pixel array uh, in P5.js, which is really, really, I'm talking about the pixel array in HTML5 Canvas, meaning there is a canvas in a browser. I am programming what's going to be on that canvas in JavaScript, and I want to know how do I access each individual pixel of the canvas, and how do I manipulate and change the color of each individual pixel for whatever purposes my mind can imagine. And this will lead to, um, how to get live images from a camera, load images from some API or from a file, and manipulate the pixels of some other image from some other source. So that I'll get to in the next video, but right now I just want to look at how does the pixel array work. So let's uh, come over here to the whiteboard for a second and kind of discuss what's at play here. So here is what I'm calling the canvas. So canvas, image, whatever you want to think about it, a pix an image on a computer is a rectangular thing, which is essentially a grid of pixels. So we can make a sort of simplified, think of a simplified low resolution, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like this has a width of six, one, two, three, four, five, and a height of five. So I now have an image that's six by five, meaning there are 30 pixels total or six times five. I hope I did the math right. Okay, so in order to access these, now P5 has functions called get and set. And these functions are useful. Get or set, you can pass an X and a Y, the numbers being starting with zero. So the X values go from zero, one, two, three, four, five, or zero, one, two, three, four. And you could say get pixel four comma two, which would be this pixel right over here. So you can use those functions, and I might in some of the examples, but I want to look at a different way of accessing the pixels, which is um, arguably going to at least be the speediest and allow for the most possibilities. I don't know if that's entirely true, but let's just take that for now. As a, and so what that is, is what I'm referring to is something called the pixels array. So behind the scenes in P5, there's a very long array with lots of numbers in it. Those numbers correspond to all of the colors in this canvas. So the question that we have to figure out is, if I want to change the color for this particular pixel, how do I find where in this array to, to do that? And so to do that, we need to do, un, we need to do a little bit of math. Because this is just a linear list, uh, one-dimensional list array, and, but the, the, the image we think of as this two-dimensional thing. So how do we go back and forth between the two of them? Now, this is not some unique problem. It happens in any computer graphics environment. But there is something different, at least if you've used processing before, um, just to take that as an example. The way that the pixels work in P5.js, HTML5 Canvas, is quite different than in processing. It's quite similar, but there's a big sort of major fundamental difference. And you will see that as I go through this. So let's look at this now. So let's just start. Let me start by telling you that the pixels in the array, if this is the array, right, uh, I'm going to give myself a bunch of spots here. The pixels start, like this pixel, the very first thing, index zero in the array, refers to this particular pixel here. But it doesn't refer to the entire pixel, it just refers to the red value of that pixel, some number between zero and 255. The second element, index number one in the array, refers to the green value for that particular pixel. The third element, or index number two, refers to the blue value. And the fourth element, or index number three, refers to the alpha value. So it takes four spots of the array for one pixel. Now remember I said there are 60 pixels. That means how long is this array? Six times four. The length of the array is 240. So for an image that is six by four that has, uh, sorry, six by five that has 60 pixels, the array itself has four times that many spots because there's a red, green, blue, and alpha value for each spot, meaning the length of the array is 240. Okay, so that we've established. Now still, so you can think about this is, the, this pixel starts at spot zero. This pixel starts at spot, and by, I should stop saying spot, I should say index, starts at index four, 
this one at index 8, this one at index 12, this one at index 16. So this is how each, each pixel's color values in the array are, four, se are separated by four index values. So that's the first thing to establish. Now, let's not think about that for a second. And let's just think, so that, that we've established. Now I'm going to erase this and back up again for a second. Let's say I want to just, though, number the pixels like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and this is our important one, 16, 17, 16. So one thing that you'll notice here, if I'm numbering the pixels this way, is that the first row is 0 through 5. The second row is 0 through 5 plus 6. Right? 0 plus 6 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, 1 plus 6 is 7, 7 plus 6 is 13. So if I know the x, y coordinate on the screen, something like the coordinate 4 times 2, I can get that number 16 by saying x plus y times width. Or uh, 4 plus 2 times 6, or 4 plus 12, which equals 16. So this is the formula for getting the numeric, the number pixel it is on the screen. Now, then I have to say, where is it in the array? Remember, the array actually went 0, 4, 8, 12, whoa, whoa, whoa. right, yeah, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16. So then all I need to do is multiply this by 4. So the way that I can find where the color values for a given pixel are in the array is the x value, the x coordinate plus the y coordinate times the width and this whole thing times 4. Oof. So you might need to diagram this out yourself, get a piece of graph paper, review it a few times, but ultimately this formula, you can just memorize it. You're going to see it in every, almost every example I make right now. So let's go back to the code itself. Oh. And i got to wake up my computer. Wake up, computer. And now huh, I can go to my code. So now, all I want to do that first is deal with the pixels of the canvas itself. One thing you have to do if you're going to deal with the pixels of the canvas is alert P5, JavaScript, the browser. I don't know who we're talking to here. But you've got to tell somebody, hey, I want to work with the pixels. So the way to do that is by saying load pixels. And I'm going to put this in draw. So the first thing I need to do is say load pixels. Now I can do anything I want. I can say pixels index 365, you know, <laughs> equals 255. Now I don't know what this is going to do. And then, ah, if I ever change the pixels, I need to say, hey, I'm done changing the pixels. Let me now say update pixels. So I have messed with the pixel array. And if I went back and I Loaded it, we should see uh, some pixel got some value somewhere. The truth of the matter is I'm not going to be able to find that pixel. I have no idea 365, was that the red part, the green part, the alpha part? So ultimately we're not going to see anything. So let's be a bit more methodical about this. Let's try to change just the first pixel in the top left corner. So we know that's the red value. Green value, blue value. We need a red value, green, a green value, a blue value, and an alpha. Those should be the first four. So that top left pixel should be white. Zoom all the way in there. Ah, you can see that. Look at that. Do you see that white pixel up there in the top left? Are we sure about that? Let's, let's move it over. Let's say four, five, six, seven. Ah, you can see it moved over, right? Can you see that pixel I changed? A little bit moved over, right? Are we really sure about this? Let's, and you know what I could do actually? Why am I even bothering? I could just say, oh no, I have to say a load pixel. I could make this zero, refresh. Look at it, now I got my pink pixel. We made a pink pixel with this giant mouse pointer pointing to it. Today is a beautiful moment, right? Because if you know how to individually address every single pixel in a canvas, there is nothing you can't possibly draw. <laughs> you're, you're mad. The world is now your oyster. I mean, you know, you want to have a 3D library for doing all that kind of stuff. Probably you're not going to do it by pixel by pixel, but there's a lot of possibilities this opens up. So we see the basics at play here, but what I want to do is now, let me look at how I might actually address every single pixel. So how might I do that? So, you know, if you're watching this video, hopefully you're aware of the idea of something called a for loop. 
and we can see this particular for loop is a loop that's saying for every x, have x go from, have a variable called x, and have x cycle 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what do I want to do for every x? I want to actually, maybe I want to do it the reverse. I want to say like for the first row, which is y, do every x. Then for the second one, do every x. Then for the third one, do every x. So I need a loop that's going through the y's as well. And this is what's known as a nested loop. Um, you may have seen this in other things. So, so if I say this, and I add another bracket, and then I need to put, indent these a little bit, we can now look at this and we can say, aha, this is a loop that's saying for every y value. Start at y value 0, go through all the x's. Now have y equal 1, go through the, all the x's. Now have y equal 2, go through all the x's. So this nested loop has the property of hitting every single x and y in the window. So now we should be able to apply our formula. Var index equals, do we remember this? x plus y times width times 4. x plus y times width, this whole thing, times 4. And now I should be able to take this and put this here, indent it properly, and say index, index plus 1, right? The index, that value is the red value of every pixel. One is the green, the next one is the blue, the next one is the alpha, so index, index plus, ah, plus two, index plus three, and you know, I might just for like sym symmetry here add the plus zero there. I don't know if that's necessary, but you can see this is the chunk I need. The index is the start of the pixel, and there are four values associated with the pixel. Now, there's something that's going to happen which is going to cause this not to work, which I will get to in a second. But this is, this is essentially the right code. I missed a small little piece only because I'm using a retina laptop, which I'll get to in a second. So if I hit refresh here, we can say, ah, weird. It worked, but I didn't get the whole canvas. Like, I got this, like, stripe of pink across the top. So unfortunately, we live in a world now, or fortunately, where we have these, like, HDPI, HPI, high dis definition display, high pixel density, high pixel density. So Mac Retina displays, other types of high density displays actually have like four pixels for every quote unquote pixel to make things finer and more higher resolution. And so if this is actually your, what you're seeing here is a view of a high density display. And so one thing I want to do just in P5, I could get into this and I could draw the pixels at higher density to do all sorts of stuff. But something I can do in P5 just to like turn this problem off is say pixel density one. So what I'm saying that is like, I don't care what kind of display the user is on. I don't, I want the canvas to be one pixel per pixel kind of regular density display as they were <laughs> year, many years ago in olden times. So if I do that, we should see, there we go. And you know, it's, it's giving me some sort of like warning that image smoothing enabled, it's changed something, and we can kind of ignore that in the console. But you can see I have now essentially written the code for the background function, right? The P5 background function you know, does exactly this. It, you give it a color like 255 comma 0 comma 255 and it fills the entire background uh, with those pixels. But I can do all sorts of things now. Like I could say, uh, I could say X, right? And Y. I don't know what this is going to do. And I could hit and I could run this. You can see now I have this kind of like gradient, right? Because the amount of red increases as the pixels move to the right. The amount of blue increases as the pixels move down. It mixes in the center. I could then also say like, make the green value a random value, and now we've got this like snowy rainbow noise. Ah, the rainbow, yay! <laughs> Whenever something happens that's rainbow-like, in a, it makes me happy and I feel glad about it. So this really concludes this particular video. I would say to you, try to get this set up, see what kind of magic pixel, pixel wonderland you can make for yourself. Um, and what I'm going to do in the next video is take this concept and actually not just make up pixel colors out of thin air, but actually pull pixels from an image, this being a live a video source, and manipulate them or draw something else based on those colors. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was 14 minutes and 46 seconds long. And uh, share with me in the comments if you make something and post it somewhere. I would love to see what it is.